for this problem, the problem statement is the assembly consists of a steel rod CB and an aluminum rod BA, each having a diameter of 12 millimeters. If the rod is subject to the axial loadings at A and at the coupling B, determine the displacement of the coupling B and at the end A. The unstretched length of each segment is shown in the figure. Neglect the size of the connections at B and C and assume that they are rigid. We have the modulus of elasticity being 200 gigapascals for steel and the modulus of elasticity for aluminum being 670 gigapascals. So as we see here is this first rod from C to B we have it being a steel material and from B to A we have aluminum and these two rods are being connected at this coupling point B and you can see the external loads being applied at the end 18 kilonewtons and at the coupling B 6 kilonewtons and we have the appropriate meters and the modulus of elasticity of the materials as well. Now one thing to keep in mind is we could actually solve for the total deformation which we're asked to solve for the deformation at this point B as well as at point A. So in this case, you have to be very careful because each rod um, experiences different external loadings because we have these two. Um, in certain instances, they will cancel out, so you have to be cautious of that. And now, just to just for a mere observation, we can actually put the deformation equation, which is PL over EA. So deformation is dependent on the external load as well as the length of the member. Since the lengths of each of these members are different, um, in addition to the material being different, we have to be we have to make sure that we're choosing the correct external load being applied to it as well as the material and so forth. In this case, the cross-sectional area of these two are the same. So we could actually start by analyzing each of the members separately and looking at the the reactionary forces as well as the internal um, loads are developed with the due to the external forces. So if you just so first step, what is the reactionary force of this system? So this is a fixed support. We have a shear reactionary reactionary shear force. We have a normal force, and we have also a moment now in this case since we have um, no external forces along the vertical then this internal shear force is zero since we have no vertical forces which causes a moment this moment would also be um, zero here so all we are left is with this normal force and of course as you can see if we were to do the analysis when it comes to the sum of forces with respect to the x direction um, we'll get a total um, reactionary force of 12 kilonewtons so if you just see the 18 kilonewtons going to the right minus the 6 we have the reactionary force being 12 kilonewtons. Now let's go ahead and first analyze the steel rod from C to B. So now here is the free body diagram of the rod CB and I cut a portion out to analyze the internal loads of that member itself. So we get the reactionary force here which is 12 kilonewtons but one thing to keep in mind is the direction of this reactionary force. So in this case we have a total of 12 kilonewtons going to the right so in this case the actual direction is equal and opposite so it will be going to the left so we have 12 kilonewtons at the reaction here of the support so that means for static equilibrium this member must have a force pulling it to the right also 12 kilonewtons so this is the force that we're going to be using for our deformation equation so the deformation for rod c b is equal to the force 12 kilonewtons times the length of that member. In this case, we're going to use the three meters for the entire member. And the modulus of elasticity of steel is 200 gigapascals. So we just convert it to kilonewtons per meter squared or kilopascals. And then the cross section on the area, we know it's 12 millimeters, so it's 0.012 meters squared times pi over four. And so the deformation of this rod from C to B, 
basically is the deformation at point B, which is what we're being asked for, is 0.00159 meters or 1.59 millimeters is how much this rod deforms. So we we saw the deformation, um, how much it, this segment deformed at point B, deformed by 1. Um, five nine millimeters here now we're also so we're also asked to solve for the deformation at the end at point a so now this is where we go ahead and solve for the do the free body diagram of the member b a in this case is the aluminum rod so let's go ahead and do that so now cutting out a section of the member b a at this point over here and i decide to draw the right side so I have the 18 kilonewton external load and then from here the internal load for static equilibrium has to be equal and opposite so we also have the 18 kilonewton so in this case this is going to be the force that we're going to plug in for our deformation equation of the rod BA so we have that external load of 18 kilonewtons times 2 meters divided by 70 times 10 to the 6 power kilopascals or kilonewtons per meter squared times a cross-sectional area which gives us a deformation of 0 0.00455 meters or 4.55 millimeters so first we solve how much it deformed at point b right 1.59 millimeters it basically deformed at this point now at point a the rod itself deformed 4.55 millimeters but to find the total deflection or how much it deformed at the end over here we would have to add both of the deformations so the total deformation so delta total is equal to the deformation of rod cb plus the deformation of rod ba and we just add them up and that gives us a total deformation of 6.14 millimeters so i went ahead and converted it to millimeters from meters and this is the answer for this problem statement so this is one thing you have to be aware of um, always analyze the system when it comes to multiple parts being connected with one another it's always smart to split them up and analyze each one to solve what the internal forces are to actually appropriately solve the deformation and not actually accidentally use an, another load that should not be the case which will lead up to wrong answers so always take it one step at a time um, the more problems you do this the easier it's going to get you have a better intuition of what forces you need to use to analyze the deformations and such